Hello, so let's make a quick page curl. Now I wouldn't recommend this for a whole book, but for a few pages, this works really well. I have a page here that's about A4 in size. It's been sub D'd. Actually, let's start off by removing everything we don't want just to make things clearer. So let's remove that. So that's without the sub D, I will put it back on. I'll reduce the sub patch level to zero, but it will still render at high res. And we're also going to be using the node displacement. We'll create a couple of nulls to control the displacement. So control N, we'll call one base. We'll move that up here. Let's have another one and call that handle. And let's just move it up here. Now we'll take both of these nulls and we'll parent it to the page. You don't have to do that, but if we move the page around, it'll all move with it. And if you have Ryan Roy's set of plugins, it has this handy cycle item shapes here. So a box, a bit big, we'll take the size down. Okay, that's fine. We'll go back to the page, so click on that, and it's time to open up the nodal displacement. We're gonna use the native displacement. So this, if we go over to the displacement input node here, double click on that. These native displacements work best in set mode. And also, as mentioned, if we're gonna move the page around, we might as well work in local coordinates. So we're gonna be bending this page, so let's go for the bend deformer and plug that straight in. We'll grab a couple of item infos. The first will point to the base, which is that one. And the second will point to the handle, which is this one. We'll take the base position into the base control and we'll take the handle position into the effect handle control. You can already see something's happening, but we need to make a few changes. So if we take our handle null here and we move it on the Y, you can see we're getting a little bend there. Now in light wave land, one meter equates to a 90 degree bend. Let's just move this base null a bit to illustrate that. So if we wanna double this over 180 degrees, we wanna go two meters high. But obviously our control handle is way off screen and that makes life a little bit harder. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna nodally tweak this height so our controls remain manageable. Let's move these back into position. And let's give us a little bit more space over here. This is the handle info. We're gonna take the position of the Y, we're gonna multiply it by a big number just so we can keep the controller in range. So natively, you could use the vector scalar and duplicate it three times for the X, Y, Z, and then bring it all together with a make vector. However, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use DB&W's tools and they have a very handy note called Channel Blender. Highly recommend DB&W tools, absolutely brilliant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the position into the vector. We're gonna need another one of these. There we go. So currently, as it stands, nothing's changing. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna intercept this little Y value here with a multiply node. So what I'm gonna do is quite simply take the Y into the multiply and the result into the Y. And this times that by something like 10. So now when we move this up, our bend is happening, but at a lower altitude, so to speak, uh, we could probably make this value slightly larger. There we go. Cool, so I'm happy with that. That's the bending sorted. Now we just need to sort the direction of the curl. And that couldn't be easier either. We're gonna use the heading of the handle to dictate the direction of the page curl. So the direction this page curl will happen will be dependent on what's going on in this axis input here. I originally set it up by plugging the world forward into the axis. This did exactly what I needed. The only problem I had with this is it looks as though it's pointing off in some arbitrary direction. But there's a simple fix to this. Let's go back to the bend plugin. Let's double click on that. And we'll change the axis type from vector to rotation. Now let's take the rotation instead of the world forward into the axis. And we'll see that this now follows a slightly more predictable direction. So now between the handle and the base, we now have enough of a rig to do what we need. So let's get on with the animation. 
Let's use these two positions as a starting point. Select those two, T to move, and move them out the way. Let's start with the base. Let's move it down here. We want to go to the origin. So we want to go to zero on the X, possibly a bit in front. We'll take the handle. So you've got a bend there. To straighten this up, we'll take the same Z coordinates as this one. So we'll just copy and paste. So that should be perfectly lined up. So there you go with a little bit of tweaking you're pretty free to do what you like in terms of page curling <laughs> turn on the sub patch see what we're doing yeah i hope that was used obviously not just for pages could be used for anything really until the next time